Hello YouTube, I'm back again with another video and this is going to be a quick duel, a non-custom duel that is with my Sword Soul Tiny deck against my opponent's Prediction Princess deck. Uh, we didn't really get to see the full potential of this, this player's deck, he or she, because my deck managed to get around it and I, uh, I drew the perfect combo, which will help me uh, next turn. And then they eventually rage quit because they know they're about to lose. I I may may I could have won that turn. I may have lost. Who knows? But you're gonna find out for yourself while watching. So you might as well just pay attention. So obviously she searches prediction ritual to go into her level nine boss monster that we're gonna see here, which happens to be uh, her prediction princess uh, ritual monster, which is Tarot Trey. And has a very um, like uh, overwhelming effect during the during your end phase. You can special summon a flip monster from your hand or graveyard in face down position. I mean in face down position. Sorry about my lisp. Damn it. Uh. So that in a way can help her abuse the effects of flip monsters. And it has a quick effect where you can target one of my monsters. But just in case that becomes a problem, I'm gonna make sure to activate infinite impermanence to negate Tarot Trey's effect so that I can be able to go off on my opponent at this point. And here I'm just going to send Vishuda with Longuyan and then he'll special summon a token and then I'll special summon Ecclesia and then I'll use Vishuda's effect bouncing her ritual monster back to her hand which is face down and then I'm going to sync for a level 10 synchro monster and this is where the rage could all begin, as you see right now. Yep. And since it was a very quick duel, I'm gonna show you guys my deck profile, which I'm willing to showcase to you guys. It is a 40 card deck. And the cards that are meaning obviously three Ash Boss, I don't need to explain too much, it's clutch in, uh, throughout uh, the meta. Ecclesia is definitely one of the cards that you have to max out at three because you're playing a lot of sword soul monsters. You're plusing when some of the card it's what's crazy this quick the, its effect is a quick effect. The last event you don't really use it unless you're playing a fusion deck or like although yes you can summon Albez with this card, but you mainly want to summon your soul sword your soul soul because those are the cards that will help you dig into your deck a lot more quicker. Uh, another card that'll be dig deep uh, deeper is Sword Soul of Moye. So when it's normal for some you reveal one worm or Sword Slayer card from your hand to your opponent. You special summon a level 4 tuner monster. You sync for a level 8 or any other synchro monster that's in your extra deck. And when it's used as material, you draw one card. Uh, another extender we're playing for the Sword Soul package is Sword Soul of Taie. Just being able to constantly banish cards from your grade, whether it's a Sword Soul card or Worm Monster. You special summon a level 4 Worm tuner monster. But you like with all their effects, you can only summon the only monsters you can special summon from your extra deck are specifically synchro monsters. It's it's a it's effect once the graveyard isn't isn't too good, but like you mainly just go for the fact that it's a it's a big extender. Another big extender that you saw earlier in the duel was Strategist Longwin. So you can discard one other Sword Soul card or War Monster from your hand to special summon it. And if you do, you can special summon a Sword Soul token, which is pretty much the same thing. Token, that's a Worm level 4 tuner. And you're the same, and pretty much you cannot, you can only specifically summon Synchro Monster from your deck while you control that token. And it has the effect where if it's used for a Synchro, as a Synchro material, you can deal your opponent 1200 points of damage. And into our Tenyi lineup, we're playing two Tenyi Spirit Arhara. So this helps, especially if you're trying to retrieve one of your banished war monsters. So it's just heavily abusable into Sword Soul. Because a lot of times you're banishing with Taiye or you're banishing with Arhara's effect. And it's like a constant loop. Another um, Tenyi monster playing is Three Ashina. I feel like this is a card you want to max out on. Although it may not be a level one tuner, may not be, you may not be going to many synchro summons with this card, but it's a card that lets you special summon from your uh, main deck if you control a face-up non-effect monster. 
And one thing I forgot to mention, this is the, pretty much the first thing you see. Like, so, these cards are very useful if you don't control any effect monsters. So, the first thing you want to do is always push some of the monsters, depending on your hand, though. So, they'll always come in handy if you control no effect monsters, and you can manage to summon them. Especially if you want to help extend to going to your extra deck as much as possible. Our fine tiny uh, the monster that we're playing in the main deck is Vishuda, which you saw earlier in the duel. Pretty much does the same thing as the majority of Tenyus with the special summon itself, if you control no effect monsters. But it's, it's, it has a very handy effect if, if you control face up non effect monster, you banish it from your hand or grave or target one card your opponent controls, return hand just like I did against my opponent's face down ritual monster, which came in clutch and can supposedly be very useful depending how you use it in uh, very uh, sticky circumstances and I feel like it's a card that you must have at least you must have at least two copies so that it, it can get you out of those tight situations and for our spells we're maxing out three for gem drop for a droplet I don't need to say too much but the fact that the card can come in clutch can help make a huge difference if you're playing against a lot of omni negates just being able to have your opponent's monsters attack and negate their effects, it's non-targeting. And the fact that it's a quick play is just enough to, to stop them in their tracks during their turn. Monster Reborn as another extender. Three, uh, two pod desires. Hopefully, once it gets through, I'm going to replace Upstar Goblin. But just going to digging your deck a lot deeper, helping you thin your deck and being able to draw two cards. Three uh, Sword Soul Emergence. A card that lets you add either a soul storm monster from your deck to end, but if you control a sickle monster, you can add a war monster instead. But it has one of those effects where if you banish it, this is like for pretty much all the sword soul spells. I could be right, it could be wrong, but if they are banished, you can increase or decrease the level of one war monster, soul storm monster you control by one until the end phase. But people are hoping this. <clears throat> But people are hoping this card gets limited. I'm not too sure why. I think it's because a lot of people despise Sword Soul. But if anything, it already got a hit when uh, Pro when Protoss got banned. So it can't sound like it can be abused any further. But again, it is a hard one to return. Just being able to help you extend, but it does not make it so that the meta is unfair. That's it would definitely be the wrong call to do so. But it's only. Is bad as if the card is too generic, too good, which you can use successfully more than once in one turn. So, and another sword soul uh, spell card we're playing is Tart uh, so Sword Soul Sacred Summit. Well, if, if you well, if, if you can, if you don't have a synchro monster, you can pretty much only spell summon sword soul monsters. But regardless, if you control a synchro monster, you can target one mon one monster instead. You special summon it from your graveyard instead. And the banishing effect is pretty much the same thing. Another uh, really powerful meta card that we're playing that I'm maxing out is three triple tactics talent. I don't need to explain much, but if your opponent decides to activate monster effects during your turn, simple during the main phase, you draw either draw two cards, you gain control of the monster your opponent controls, or you shuffle one card from your opponent's hand back, uh, into the deck. And the thing how you should play tactic triple tactics talent, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but if you're going into your main phase two, uh, like and they act if like if you're going to your main phase two, if your opponent decides to activate a card effect during your battle phase or like during your main phase, the best thing is to do is to look at one card they might possibly have in their hand, shuffle them back to deck, and then it will definitely affect them next turn so that they don't have too many options. So for sure, being able to disrupt your opponent's consistency can affect them, the odds of them drawing into certain cards that they want to be able to get into. On the, and then hopefully, if once a pot desire is, is unlimited, I'll take away Upstar Goblin for a third copy. But you you still should play Upstar Goblin just hope because you're basically playing 39 cards with this card. And then, although the drawback is. Your opponent gains a thousand life points, but at the same time, you're getting one extra card, and the deck is pretty much at 39 entirely. When once this card's in your hand, because you're not really getting rid of anything, it's just you're giving your opponent a thousand life points. So, so for our final traps, three infernal permanents to prevent my opponent from going 
into getting like their Omni negates and slowing them down even further. And our final trap is Sword Soul Black Pick Blackout in case I want to pop one of my opponent's cards. Or if I want to special summon another level 4 uh, worm uh, tuner monster. And we're not going to talk about the side deck, we're just going to go straight to the extra deck. Adam and Serpator Rise and Dragite. Simply a card that's easy to get access into, especially at Moe. And what's important is that you can be able to negate spell trap cards during either player's turn while there is a, a water monster in your graveyard, which, which, which I might add is Moye. So, Baron de Flu, which you obviously saw in the duel, we didn't get to use its full effect, but which is also the card that made my opponent rage quit. In itself, has just the best effects. Nothing about this card is entirely negative. Is very useful. Like everything I can say about this card is entirely positive. So it's something that you want to play at once, so that you have a chance of preventing your opponent from hurting you, and you can be able to hurt them after. So another worm monster we're playing um, that is an action that is an action but I'm gonna get into. So is Baxia of the Yang Zing, but I'm just gonna get straight to the point. This card you have to play it too because it's easy to synchro summon and. Not only that, for each of the different attri original attributes of this, the War Monsters you're using uh, to synchro summon this card, you can shuffle, target, shuffle that many cards on the field to into the deck. But that, like, especially against your opponent, can be can come in very useful. So, and also that it's, it's able to extend even further because you can be able to target a card you control, one level four low monster in your graveyard. You destroy the first target, and you're able to put some the monster onto your field. And another Yang Zing card we're playing is Xiao Feng. While this card is uh, Synchro Summoned on the field, your opponent can activate the effects of the monster monsters with the same attributes as the Yang Zing monsters used for the Synchro Summon. So this will usually come in handy if you're using either um, your Boxia or the other um, Yang Zing monster that I'm going to get into, but but what's what's re what really helps with this card is that if it's destroyed by battle or card effect, you can add one tuner monster from your deck to your hand, or once per turn, when a monster you or opponent controls destroyed by battle, you can help it helps you extend even further. Going to um, a war monster from your deck into a defense position, whose original attribute matches the one that was destroyed, and not only that, the effects. The best part is that you can be able to activate that monster effect. So if you're trying to go into Taiye or Moye, it can help you go into another synchro play, and you can be able to abuse it if you get guys understand what I mean fully. So another worm monster going to Draco Berserker of the Tinny, basically the Boral Sword of this deck. What I mean by that is that. If your opponent active besides the effect where if your opponent activates a monster effect, you banish it. The thing is, if this card attacks and destroys an effect, most of the sends it to the grave. This is the, this is the one I think I, I think is close to being Boros Sword's effect because if it destroys the effect monster, it sends to the graveyard. It gains equal to destroyed monster's original attack, and it can make a second attack on a monster during the battle phase. Although it may not be better than Boros Sword. But again, can pretty much hurt your opponent even more if they have another monster on the field. Another card we're playing into is uh, that isn't a war monster is Ray Rose Dragon. So simply for the fact that your opponent may have a lot of resources in the grave and you want to be able to get rid of all of them, so doing so ensures that whatever strategy they have planned out is gone forever for the rest of the duel. Another war monster that we're playing two of is. The uh, Soul Soul Brain Master Shia Shi Zhao. So if he's sick or something, you can add or banish one Soul Soul card from your deck. And he has a quick effect. It may not be the strongest, but it only affects monsters on the field. So basically, you banish Soul Soul or War Monster from your hand or graveyard. Target one other effect monster the field, negate its effects until the end phase. But you're mainly playing two simply because of the fact that it allows you to extend your your field. So. Another Soul Soul monster is playing is Quick Sing Long Yin. And this one makes this card very useful if you can literally draw a card whenever you successfully single summon another worm monster. And it deals massive damage because if your opponent special summons 
a monster, you can banish both those monsters and inflict 1200 points of damage. Or if they activate a spell and trap or a card effect, a mold. You can banish that card if you do inflict 1200 damage, even though it may not negate, but it's still being able to hurt your opponent's life points so that you have a chance of defeating them. Another uh, Soul Soul Monster play is Cheng Jian. So, may not be the best out of the other Sword Soul, but this in itself is useful because this card gains 100 attack and defense points, for, and monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack and defense for each card that is banished. And if this card would be banished by a card effect, you can banish one card from your graveyard instead. And if a card is banished, you can banish one card from each and from your both from each, like whether from both your opponent's field and graveyard. And our final synchro monster playing is Yazi. So, like I said before, not the best Yang Zhang monster, but helping you extend further and being able to pop a card. But you really choose to really use this effect to pop itself and especially summon another war monster from your deck and defense position. So, they increase the odds of you seeing either Taiye, Mori, or any other of your team monsters. And our we're now we're going to our link monsters. We're playing two Monk of the Tangy. The reason why we're playing two because it can be fodder for Baxia and it help can help you be able to extend with your Tangies a lot further as to why we're playing one because you link summon using your Tangy monsters and then you use it and then you place it onto your extra monster zone, giving you space to summon tiny monsters from your hand into the main monster zone. And our final tiny monster that we're playing next week, that happens to be a link monster, is Shaman of the Tiny, which helps you summon any of your war monsters regardless of their type. Like what I mean, regardless of the type of like method that they're used to summon, whether they are a link or a synchro monster, you special summon in them. But unfortunately, because of the effect, you cannot special summon monsters. You cannot activate the effect of special summon monsters from the extra deck. But that won't really matter, depending how you use this effect. But I'm not sure whether this effect is useful when an attack is declared involving your face-up non-effect monster. You can target one card your opponent controls, destroy it. Though I'm not too sure why you'd even keep a non-effect monster on the field, since you're going to use it for either your synchro summon or you're gonna link summon into this guy so again but like he is really important because it's the fact that he can go into any of your where monsters that you might possibly have that are in your graveyard that you synchro summoned and just the fact that they is that itself may not may not be the most generic card but since we summon a lot of war monsters you can be able to regain their effect and be able to take advantage of your opponent and that's the whole purpose of actually like interpreting this card into your extra deck so that you know that you have a chance of being able to retrieve those monsters and be able to sh make sure that you're pro providing some type of discomfort towards your opponent and helping you gain that easy win like I did towards my opponent in the early duel. But again, I hope you guys enjoy the duel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the duel. Be sure to check for more upcoming content later in the future. Be sure to check your notifications. Comment, like, subscribe. Thank you.